Hello, fellow Tarnished. Hello, Elden Ringers. How's it going? This is just going to be a quick video going over some hidden mechanics and tricks I've found so far in Elden Ring. All of this footage will be from the early game, so don't worry about spoilers. The basic threshold for stuff I'm including in this video is anything that the game doesn't explicitly tell you, along with just a couple easy to miss features. And these things range from very useful to borderline useless, but neat. So expect some variety. Let's do it. First up is one I'm sure a lot of people haven't noticed. You have iframes while mounting your horse. This is surprisingly useful because boss fights on horseback in the overworld will frequently result in you getting thrown off your horse mid-fight. With these iframes, remounting is actually safer than you might think, so feel free to mount up quickly even if there's an attack coming down. And in that same vein, you also get iframes when dismounting from your horse. This is noticeably less useful because when would you actually dismount calmly during a fight, but it's still worth mentioning because it's absolutely a flex and looks cool. And you know, looking cool is the real endgame of Elden Ring, so make sure you're taking notes. Next up are the horse jump pads, or spirit springs. Everyone knows that you can use these to jump high and get to the top of cliffs, but I think a lot of people don't realize that you can do the reverse and jump onto them from the top and not take fall damage. I lost count of how many times I use this feature to get around the world, so definitely keep it in mind. Horse combat. Everyone knows that you can attack from horseback, but I've seen quite a few people miss the feature that you can hold strong attack to create an active hitbox alongside your character while riding. So for example, you can drag a greatsword along the ground, or if you want to be extra cool, you can twirl some twin blades. You can also use this to help combo bigger enemies over and over with larger weapons. And because I know at least one person didn't notice, you can also do all these attacks from the left side of your horse with L1 and L2. This is super useful for fights like the Tree Sentinel, as I believe his attack patterns favor you circling counterclockwise with left attacks instead of right. Next, you can completely change your direction midair with the double jump your horse has. This is most useful when you're attempting to carefully work your way down a large cliff with platforms like you see here. Judging from the bloodstains I've seen, too many people try to do these sections on foot instead of on their horse. I understand the instinct to do this, but the horse controls are actually pretty precise, and if you make a mistake, you can save yourself with a double jump. You can also use this double jump redirection technique to reach areas directly underneath you, like this. Very useful for a few secrets. One last horse-related tip, if you knock an enemy off their horse, you can do a finisher on them while they're lying on the ground. And by far, the coolest way to do this is by parrying the enemy's attack. However, if you yourself get knocked off your horse near one of these guys, they can do the same finisher on you, so be careful. Rainbow Stones. These are little glowing rocks you can find and then drop on the ground. Now I'm aware most Souls veterans might know this one already, but for everyone else, you can drop these off of ledges to find out if a fall is deadly. If it breaks and makes a loud sound, the fall will kill you. If it lands safely, then feel free to drop. This is possibly more useful in the Elden Ring than any of the Souls games because of just how many drops down ledges you'll be making across your playthrough. Hitboxes. This game has very accurate hitboxes, and you can use that to your advantage on certain enemies or bosses by moving your hitbox low to the ground, either with weapon arts or, if you're cool, emotes. Okay, this next one is super useful and very easy to miss. You ever notice how sometimes when an enemy attacks your shields, they'll bounce off of it, giving you a huge opening to guard counter, but other times they just keep attacking? Well, it turns out that this can be influenced by your shield. Most strong attacks on medium shields will not be deflected, but if you upgrade to a great shield, suddenly a lot more attacks will bounce off. I mean, just look at this. If you rely a lot on guard counters, investing in strength for a great shield will make a massive difference. D-pad shortcuts. It can get kind of messy during a fight when you're frantically cycling through your D-pad items to find your healing flask, but did you know you can actually just hold down on the D-pad to instantly switch to whatever's in the first slot? So just put your healing flask in slot one and you're set even when fights get chaotic. On that same note, you can also do this with spells by holding up on the D-pad to switch to whatever is the first spell you currently have memorized. I've seen a surprising amount of longtime players miss out on this feature. Enemies with glowing eyes. Have you noticed them? Every now and then you'll find a normal enemy with glowing orange eyes. It took me a while to pick up on this, but they actually drop five times as many runes as normal when you kill them. I believe any enemy can get these eyes, and it's completely random when it happens. So whenever you see one of these guys, it's worth going out of your way to get them, especially if they're a bigger enemy. Grab attacks. Did you know you can actually escape these? This has been a feature since Dark Souls 1, but I see people miss out on this constantly, and I know new players definitely don't know. If you ever get grabbed by an enemy, mash the buttons or triggers on your controller to get out faster. It's easiest to just alternate the left and right triggers, but the face buttons work too. This won't work for all grabs, but if it's something that does multiple ticks of damage, it'll probably work. Item drops. Ever notice how sometimes when you kill an enemy, white souls will shoot out of them? This is actually there to let you know that the enemy just dropped an item. This is especially useful for farming since you no longer 
longer have to wait those few extra seconds for the enemy's body to ragdoll to know if you've got something. Poison. Miyazaki loves his swamps and poison areas, so this next tip will be more relevant than you think. Make sure you don't roll in poison areas. I know the instinct will be there, especially for Souls veterans used to rolling through Blighttown, but this time you'll actually get covered in poison when doing this. Once this happens, your poison meter will continue to go up even after you've stepped out of whatever goo you were just walking through. So yeah, this makes fighting enemies in these sections a lot tougher since there's a punishment for trying to dodge away. Speaking of poison meters filling up, that's actually a good way of envisioning how the enemy's stance system works in this game. Basically, you can make any enemy or boss vulnerable for a critical hit follow-up when you break their stance by attacking them enough times. The fastest way to do this are with charged strong attacks, jump attacks, and guard counters. But what the game doesn't tell you is how you need to keep the pressure up because this hidden stance meter decays over time. To test this, I fought the giant in the mines a few times and only used fully charged strong attacks. Usually it would take me 4 hits to break his stance, but one time it took me 2 hits when I did them back to back. That alone already proves how this works, but to confirm this further, I did another run where I did one charge hit at a time and waited 20 seconds between each attack. After 10 hits, he was still standing. So essentially, you can vision every enemy's stance as an invisible meter that slowly goes down whenever you're not hitting them. And since we're in the mines, ever notice how hitting these rock guys causes your weapon to bounce back? There's actually a trick to avoid this. Just use strong attacks, or two-hand your weapon. Then boom, you're good to go. This also applies to shields that cause your weapon to bounce back. Two-handing will prevent your combo from being broken and let you potentially break their guard. On the subject of combos, this game added proper light attack combo chains with unique animations for each swing. Most attacks have five hits in a combo, but bigger weapons usually have four and faster weapons have six. But the real hidden mechanic I think most people may not have noticed is that the damage of each swing goes up if you keep attacking. This can be a little hard to notice since the numbers automatically add up above the enemy's health bar, but if you do the math, you can see the damage slightly increases. So for example, this means that if you have the chance to get a three hit combo in, it'll do more damage than if you get three separate non-chain attacks. Remember when I said I was done with the horse related tricks? Well, I lied. Here's another weird one I found. First, it's important to know that two-handing a weapon increases your effective strength by 50%. So here, my strength is only 12, and I can't properly use the sword that needs 16. But if I two-hand it, my strength jumps up to 18, and I can actually do damage. For some reason, this works on horseback too. Despite the attack animation not changing and clearly only using one hand, if you're two-handing your weapon before mounting your horse, you'll do full two-handing damage. As you can see here, it's a huge difference, and I found myself using this a surprising amount. It's possible this is just a glitch, but for now, I'd say use it. And here's another horse trick. I'm just now realizing how many of these are horse related. Anyway, big enemies can hurt each other with their attacks. You can really abuse this by circling around and weaving through them with your horse. If you want a great place to practice this, go here on your map and find five giants, and just keep moving and making sure to time your dashes properly. This game loves throwing big enemies at you, so getting good at this early on will pay off. And here's just one more horse tip, for real this time. So you can get knocked off your horse in two different ways. The first is by getting staggered and simply falling off, and the second is when your horse runs out of health and dies. I found that during the chaos of boss fights, it was sometimes hard to tell if my horse was still alive after falling off because the two animations look pretty similar. This was a problem because when your horse dies, this little menu prompt comes up for you to revive it. And if you're not expecting this menu to come up, it's very easy to die if you were, say, planning to use your horse mounting iframes in that instant. So the trick to tell if your horse died is that there's an audio cue when it happens. It makes a distinct death sound instead of silence when it's just you getting staggered off normally. It took me a long time to notice this, so I'm gonna guess you might not have either. Demi-humans. Just a small mechanic here, but I really like how sometimes there's a leader or alpha within a group of demi-human enemies, and if you kill it, the smaller ones will stop attacking and surrender. Even if you hit them, they just won't fight back. Stealth. With the new stealth mechanic FromSoft added, I decided to experiment a bit. It turns out that if you can break line of sight long enough during combat, enemies will lose track of you, and you can sneak back up for a backstab. I don't think there's a reason to actually do this usually, but it's cool that it's a thing. Another stealth trick. Enemies are attracted to sound, and you can take advantage of this in a couple different ways. You can shoot an arrow on a surface near them to get them to turn toward it, or you can do something like I did here. I attacked the wall, making a sound, and the enemy on the other side heard this sound and just stared at the wall while I snuck around for a free backstab. I really like that this is a thing you can do. Did you know you can do actions besides climbing on ladders? If you played the other Souls games, you probably did, but for everyone else, you can attack on ladders by pressing R1 to attack above and R2 to attack below you. You can also heal on ladders. Both are very situational, but you'd be surprised how often ladder shenanigans can happen from soft games. Map pieces. The big thing with the map in this game is that you need to find the pieces to uncover it for yourself. If you're like me, I only had part of Limgrave uncovered for the first 10 hours because I just could not find the other map pieces. That was until I realized that there's an icon showing exactly where to find them. I'm sure a lot of people picked up
up on this themselves, but I'm guessing a good chunk of you didn't know this. And lastly, I have one more tip, and it's potentially the least useful, but most fun. We all know that the real defining feature of FromSoft games is being able to roll through barrels and other breakable objects, but did you know you can also break them by jumping near them? That's not the trick though. The trick is that you can land on these objects if you initiate your jump far enough away. This is mostly just for fun, but there was actually more than one occasion where I used this to get somewhere I wasn't supposed to. I encourage everyone to mess around with this and see where the jump button takes you. But yeah, I think that'll do it. I hope you found most of these hidden mechanics and tricks useful or fun to learn. I'm still not sure exactly what kind of videos I want to make for this game, so feel free to suggest things you'd be interested in seeing. Thank you for watching, subscribe for Elden Bling, and take it easy.